What's up, everyone? This is Junebug with a throwback to the old content. Shoutouts to Switch. Say hi, Switch. Hello. This guide is going to be broken up into a few specific pieces, so if you want to go to any part, just click on it. Without further ado, let's get into some Wolf. Hitting people with Wolf is the most fun I've ever had playing Smash. His punish tree feels infinite. After thousands of hours of beating people up with Wolf, I still find myself doing something new every time I pick him up. He's all the fun of Spaces with a little bit of Falcon Flare through his side B combo finish. You shoot the other guy in the head, and then you do a dope combo. It's a good time. Wolf has a lot of important tech that carries with it an understanding of Smash fundamentals. Of course, Wolf does not function without his shine. Like Fox and Falco, you may cancel your shine and do all the fun little shenanigans. Lasers. You ever want to shoot gun? And P+, you can shoot the gun. Wolf's laser is the best projectile in the game. Understanding its utility in Wolf's neutral is vital to his archetype. In neutral, it's a valuable lockdown tool like Falco laser. But unlike Falco, Wolf will more often true combo off of laser as it incurs more total stun. Wolf's laser is really good for approaching and not approaching. <laughs> laser will force a response from your opponent and Wolf can always have a response. Laser allows you to control space and start your pressure strings. Pressure strings that may look similar to some other games. Let's talk about his approaching aerials. Nair is a really useful tool. It is a multi-hit with a landing hitbox, and it can be used similarly to Fox Drill and Melee. Nair can combo, cross up, and be used to start Wolf Shine pressure. Shine is huge! It's the biggest shine! It's not. It isn't? Nah, look at Fox's. <laughs> the, the fuck? <laughs> Why is it so big? Uh, well, anyway, it looks big. And it sends at a good angle. <laughs> nice. Wolf can use it for shield pressure, combos, and of course, crouch cancel. Crouch cancel shine ends up being really useful as Wolf because he's heavy, his shine is pretty big, and his crouch goes really low. So do stuff like this. But if you ever get bored of shining, you can grab. Wolf's throw game could be the best in P+. We're not going to get into the specifics of his throw combos here, but just know that Wolf can set up for a grab quite easily between his shine and laser pressure. Jab can be useful to throw in when your opponent isn't holding down. Wait, wait, Wolf's jab combo actually breaks CC at a reasonably low percent. Seriously? Wolf is broken. Anyway, jab can be useful as a poke, especially after a laser at high percents, and can confirm into grab and smashes. Up air is a disjointed poke that can be used similarly to Falcon up air, except on block, to pressure opponents moving on platforms and juggle them into confirms. Bear and Fair are good at controlling space because they auto cancel out a short hop. They are completely safe on retreat. It's no Brawl Wolf back air though. Bear also serves as a fairly safe kill move at the higher percents. Full hop from Wolf is quite strong, as it is with other spaces. Full hop provides a range of drift and timing mix ups on your landing. This is part of the reason Chillin' Dude found so much success with full hop down air, which has fallen out of use in the current meta. While Dare can lead to a full combo, it is less strong than other landing options, like Laser or Nair. And that's neutral. But now the cool stuff. Switch, take it away. Punish and Smash is weird because it depends on many variables such as percent, weight, and fall speed. But there's also this. Gravity is a measure of acceleration. Higher weight means they experience less hit stun. People say Donkey Kong is super easy to combo, but what they don't tell you is he weighs 3,000 pounds and experiences less hits than most of the cast and will up you out of your combo and murder you. I could talk about Wolf's combos all night, but to keep things quick, we'll examine nine main branches of Wolf's punish tree. At the low percents, Shine is the big money. This goes for any character at low percent. You can always get another hit after Shine versus Floaties. You can wave dash out of your Shine. It doesn't matter how they DI, barring inhuman SDI. I guess barring Wizzy SDI. If you get a grab, you can up throw and get a few up airs into a potential further juggle. You can also find a string from back throw, but it comes down to preference usually. Once you've gotten them to the mid percents, you are looking for a nice up air string, most often found with a shine. From there, you can rar bear, set up a tech chase with dare, or simply continue to shark them. Wait, you're telling me Wolf doesn't just zero death floaties at every percent? He has to actually play the game and do a juggle state first, them. Assuming they don't hold in the entire time, sadly, yeah. Shoutouts to Kais. If you find a grab at the mid percents, back throw is your best friend. Now you're looking for your kill. Grabs are huge, as back throw will set up for fair and flash on DI in and out, respectively. In most cases, barring Samus. You, you, can't, you can't really do anything to Samus. 
F throw can also link into Flash or Fair on D.I.N. This is especially important versus heavy floaties, like Samus, because F throw is a weight independent throw. Once again, Shine is great as it can often combo into Flash on DI out and Fair, or shorten Flash if you're cracked, <laughs> on DI in until it sends too far for either. Yeah, I love me some Shine into teleport yes. me. Never gets old. <laughs> if you can't find a juicy grab or opener, Laser and Jab are very consistent at setting up Down Smash, F Smash, or Up Smash if you're feeling spicy. Floaties are an integral part of Smash Brothers, so you gotta know how to fuck them up. Don't be afraid to take your time with the punishes because floaties are scary. Between Shine Out of Shield, a big up air, and a very high dash speed, Wolf excels at avoiding counter hits, holding center, and safely confirming kills. What a good character. Surprise, surprise, Shine is once again your most consistent combo starter. Against these guys, you can actually get a cute little wave Shine going, or really any aerial of your choice. What about those pillar combos with Shine that Chillin' Dude used to do back in the day? Well, funny you should mention that. You see, you very well can do pillar combos, but due to a little thing called knockback stacking, you need to do the shine and dare as closely together as possible. If you can dare them before the hit stun of the shine is finished, you can safely get your next shine. If you're a little too slow and therefore do not stack the knockback of the shine and dare, your opponent will be able to shield before your shine is out and you'll need to realize this and start shield pressure most often with a quick shine grab. If you net yourself a grab, you're essentially just looking to up throw here. From there, you can get a few up airs, a shine, or some combination of both. At the middle percents, shine remains an amazing tool that gets you anything you like. Up airs will link together nicely on DI in, and you can often still reach DI away with a quick dash attack or a rar bear. Off of throws, you can take some guaranteed damage with up throw into aerial, or you can look for a DI mix up into a potentially longer string on back throw or down air. Or you can tech chase like a weenie. At the higher percents, you can make a lot of magic with your weak hit aerials. Both the weak hit of Fair and Bear are excellent at setting up for their stronger hitboxes or a flash. Shine remains godlike and gives you Fair on DI in and Flash on DI away until they get too high and fly a bit too far for either. For longer than you'd expect, up throw will net a strong aerial and back throw and down throw are a clean 50-50 that give Fair or a tech chase smash attack. Once again, jabs and lasers provide a hit confirm to seal stocks responsibly. Now the thing that everyone cares about, some good old fast faller on fast faller action. You can't pay me to say that. Let's start at the low percents again. Heck yeah. Shock and horror, Shine is the money maker once again. Wow, crazy. This time though, you're looking to set up tech traps. If you catch DI in on a Shine, you can Shine again or not and get them to miss a tech. From there, you get a juicy jab reset into dare, into whatever you like. Be careful with the jab as it is not a true reset beyond 20-ish percent, at which point they can buffer something. I usually just spam double shine around this percent. I kind of just spam double shine at every percent. As long as you're having fun. When you find a grab, up throw guarantees you a tech chase on DI away and either up tilt or shine if they DI in. Back throw gives you anything you like on DI in and once again a tech chase on DI away. Now mid percents is where it gets juicy. It's, it's pretty juicy the whole time. All right. Here, the world is your oyster. The world being Wolf's Kit. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Up tilt, dash attack, shine, weak fair, strong fair, they all guarantee another hit, or at the very least, a tech chase. If you catch DI in, up air, weak bear, and strong bear will keep things moving as well. Up throw starts to get quite nutty because you can now dash attack or run shine if they DI away. And as usual, you can do whatever you want if they hold in. You can still back throw and get whatever off DI in, which can be good if a platform is blocking your up throw, or you want to mix it up with a cute little back throw down smash at the ledge. How do you kill them though? Uh, shine leads to side B, right? Not really. If they DI away, you can't flash them. But DI in? Wait, but that's that's straight up. Yeah, you have to get a short. I've hit shine flash though. Yeah, because it's a frame one move and no one DIs it. Here, you're playing around the 50-50 of combo DI and survival DI. Survival DI on up air and back air can get you more hits, including a flash. If they gamble on DI away and you hit a strong bear, they're gonzo. Weak fair is your best friend. You can easily chain up to five of these bad boys into one another on a spacey at high percent. It just kind of sends them nowhere and Wolf can follow any DI. Let me check the angle. God damn, this shit is big. But not compared to Wario up air. Anyway, up throw remains super good as you can weak fair into anything or just outright bear on DI in and you can flash on DI out, excluding Falcon because he's too heavy. Again, if you catch DI in on a back throw, you get a smash attack or really whatever you're feeling, but up throw is a guaranteed follow-up. 
As per usual, jab and laser lead to good stuff, but only if they don't CC or ASDI down. Also, Nair into Down Smash just works pretty much against every character we mentioned at high percents. It is easier and begins earlier versus lighter characters, and takes longer to start working versus the heavier ones. Just like Puff Drill. That's Wolf's combo game, folks. For some of these combos in action, you should watch Have You Seen Me 2? And 1. And maybe some other Switch matches. Link in the description. Smile. Wolf tends to have some of the better edge guarding in the game due to his ledge refresh and strong punishes on landings. His up B stall at the ledge is fully invincible and has a fairly lenient window. Aerial into ledge regrab is a pretty solid option as Wolf, since you can threaten the space around the ledge and regrab it to refresh invincibility. This works for every aerial except Dare, so pretty good. Anytime a character is recovering under the ledge, Drop Down Shine covers a massive area and should send them away as long as he shine from the ledge side. Stuff like Dare or Nair on a character suffering landing lag can set up for a full combo and kill setup. Nair is more consistent, as Dare can be DI'd down to avoid the pop-up. You can ledge dash into grab or another option. Yeah, that's that's Wolf edge guarding. Wolf recovering though? My man uh, has some lag. To be exact, 20 frames on up B and 34 on side B. Importantly though, if you're high enough off the ground, similarly to Sheik, he experiences much less. Also, you can edge cancel both of them. So, get good at that. It's pretty useful. It's pretty good. He's got angs, though. Swangs, if you will. On both side B and up B. Much like his spacey brethren, Wolf has access to all 300-something juicy angles that your notches or lack thereof will allow. Much unlike his spacey brethren, Wolf's side B is at an angle, and this angle can be slightly adjusted up or down by holding the control stick accordingly during the move. How many different angles does this have? Middle, up, and down by about 8 degrees. Thanks, chillin' dude. But you have shortens, too. You do! Four lengths in total, including full, with a two-frame window for the shortest length, and a one-frame window for the two shortens after that. Which makes 12 different options with side B. Yeah, but it's not without faults. The high-end lag allows your opponent to rinse and repeat a flowchart edge guard of regular ledge getup from ledge into hit you off again. Regular getup also beats the side B to ledge, Sort of like a timed getup on Sheik Poof in Melee. However, this only works when Wolf is fairly far from the stage, since when you're close, you have access to many different angles. You can choose to go to the platforms, and you can edge cancel both up and side B on said platforms to avoid the lag. Recovering with Wolf is not the easiest thing to do, but if you get a little creative and mix things up, he has a lot of ways to get back on stage. Wolf has a similar matchup spread to the other space animals in Project Plus. He might lose to, like, two of these guys, and beat or go even with everyone else. He consistently out-combos and out-neutrals most of the cast, and he looks cool while doing it. Well, sometimes. Wolf is solid on most stages, and his neutral is most oppressive on long, flat stages due to lasers. FD sucks, by the way. <laughs> however, it can be quite matchup dependent, as you don't want to counterpick Marth to FD. However, however... Fountain sucks ass for Wolf, and you should ban it in every matchup. If a platform rises while you shoot a laser, congrats, you've been forced into missing your wavelength. It's also a short stage, so you have less space to set up laser and are closer to being offstage when you get hit. Fuck Fountain. And Nintendo. Fountain sucks, unless you're chic. Well, we finished. Yay. This took so fucking long. Jesus. <laughs> but we did it. Shoutouts to Switch. And shoutouts to everyone who takes the time to watch this. Project Plus is a fucking awesome game, and anyone who likes Smash and platform fighters should check it out. Uh, special shoutouts to Trinity, aka Melee Sad Post, for DMing me asking about whether there was a wolf guide of some kind back in January 2021. Took a while, but we made this for you, homie. Thanks for all the work you've been doing for us, including the upcoming Project M Theater. Be sure to vote for Switch and check out the event starting on the last Saturday of the month on twitch.tv slash heartswap TV. Links in the description. Shoutouts to the PMP Plus community for being really cool. Keep playing and pushing the game you love. Thanks for watching. Enjoy this character. He's sick as hell. My DMs are open. Feel free to send me fire wolf combos. Peace. Like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>